I wanna stop motion, stand still. I wanna stop motion, stand still. Wallace and Gromit. I wanna stop motion, stand still. I wanna stop motion, stand still. This is a behind the scenes video of a client shoot for Bang Cookies. They're a really cool company out of New Jersey and they probably have the best damn cookies around. Not only are they tasty, but they're pretty good looking too as well and you can order them online. They sent me like 50 or 60 for the shoot and when they arrived, they all still looked amazing with all those tasty ingredients poking out on the top there. And for the most part, they're pretty uniform and circular. So I'm thinking I can do some pretty cool graphic compositions using the shapes for these stop motions. Talk about the gear a little bit before I start. I'm not using a ton of gear to make these stop motions. For my camera, I have my Canon 5DS with my 24 millimeter lens. I was just thinking, man, as far as cameras go, this is an older camera. It came out back in 2015, but it's still a lot of bang for your buck. And at this point, I don't know whether to retire it or sell it or just keep using it. Plus you can assign this top button here to cycle through different crops if you want, like 16 by nine, one by one square, four by five, which is really helpful for composing your stop motion. And it's still a pretty good camera. I just checked online and you can get this brand new for like $1,500, which is about 3,000, 4,000 cheaper than when I got it. And if you're in the market right now, that's a pretty good deal. The camera is fixed to two C stands and an extension arm with a ball head leveled and raised above the table for our overhead shot. To control the camera, I'm tethered to my computer running the stop motion software Dragon Frame 4. To light all these stop motion shots, I went with my Godox SZ150R with a large softbox right up against the table in the top left hand corner of the frame. But with that, I had to build out a massive wall to block off all this natural light using my black reflector and I clamped on a couple of black cards to the side. I wanna stop motion, stand still, Wallace and Gromit. I wanna stop motion, stand still. 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 Wallace and Gromit. I wanna stop motion, stand still. I wanna stop motion, stand still. Wallace and Gromit. I wanna stop motion, stand still. I wanna stop motion, stand still. Wallace and Gromit. So this stop motion is going to be a single take type of stop motion. I mean, well, at least until the end. And I don't know what you call this type of stop motion, but I guess I'm just trying to say that the subject here is not going to be leaving the frame or I'm not going to be changing the scene up a bunch versus say the one on the pink background where the cookies are leaving the frame and reappearing in a new scene. But I've still broken this stop motion down into four parts just to make things easier and just so I don't get lost along the way. This first part, this first take that we're doing is really simple. It's just the hero cookie, the bourbon toffee walnut cookie right here, which sounds really amazing. I haven't tried this flavor yet, but this cookie is gonna fall from the middle of the frame up at the top here and then just fall down into this pile of cookies at the bottom of our frame. From there, the rest of this stop motion is gonna be shot in reverse. I'm moving my computer and my monitor around so my monitor is closer to my table because the very last shot, I need to bring my left hand in with the ingredients and hit the keyboard with my right hand to take the shot. I thought about leaving it arranged like this because it is more convenient with my monitor and keyboard next or closer to my shooting table. However, it's a real big pain to edit like this and I really didn't set this up to be a stop motion studio, but now that I'm doing a lot more stop motions, I'm thinking about doing some bigger plans for 
for in the future where maybe I get multiple monitors, a monitor for you know shooting on specifically, and then a monitor for editing. But we'll see how it goes. Now, I'll just speed through this take because there's not a whole lot to it. Basically, I've drawn out six increments here for it to fall. Then when it hits the bottom, it's going to bounce a little bit and disturb some of these other cookies and then come to a rest. I'm trying to give it a little momentum, a little gravity, but not too much because it's the end scene. Okay, so our hero cookie here is gonna start at the very bottom of our frame, exactly in the same position as it was when it started in the last frame. And then this cookie is gonna move up into the middle. I think I'm gonna give this movement another six increments. And then once it reaches the middle here, I'll just give it a little wiggle back and forth. Then I'm gonna place this nice looking cutting board loaded up with all these delicious looking cookies into the middle here covering up our hero cookie. And this is where stuff is gonna get complicated because the very next shot, I'm going to be replacing all these different cookies with their respective ingredients using some stop motion magic. But for now, it's still pretty simple. I just gotta get this cutting board from one side and into the middle. A cool little feature that I wanna highlight is that you can set Dragon Frame 4. To take multiple shots in succession, I can click on Capture up top here and then select Shoot 3 Frames or Shoot 4 Frames or 5 Frames however many I want, or press the hotkeys on my keyboard, control three, control four, control five, however many frames I wanted to take to give me enough time to get over to the table and get my hands in the shot. Then when I get to our hero cookie, I'll remove it and just place that cutting board right on top. Okay, so here is the take that is the cause or reason for shooting all of this in reverse. And it's because I'm gonna be tearing these cookies apart into little pieces and turning them magically into raw ingredients. I'm gonna first create a bunch of circles on a new layer around each cookie. So as I break the cookies apart a bunch of times, I can set them back in exactly the same spot. I'm also gonna be using this whisk as a prop. I had to think of some way to turn these ingredients into cookies, or since we're shooting in reverse, turn these cookies into ingredients. But I just thought that the whisk, because they're cookies, made sense. Now that I have my plan all set up, everything's ready to go, I just gotta build up the courage to start breaking these things apart. I'm using a combination of the circles that I drew as overlays and the onion skin feature inside of Dragon Frame 4 to try to make this as smooth as possible. As I tear them apart, I'm looking for any point of reference on the cookie itself. Anything like a chocolate chip or, you know, a, a raise in the cookie dough, a freckle, something, anything to kind of just orient me into like where I need to make the cut and, and where I need to reposition it when I get back to the table. But an exact science, it ain't. Once I completely mangled the cookie, I return to the table to fill in the gap with some of these ingredients. And then I go back to the software and find the spot in the frame where I need to place the whisk and I take the shot. And once all that's done, I start again and again and again and again until finally, it's been about three or four hours at this point working on just this one take. And I'm super exhausted at this point, but I'm about ready to replace the last little remnants of cookies with some ingredients. So I'm gonna grab my whisk one last time and I'm done with this pretty cool shot. All right, so we're finally at our very last take here. It's taken an immense amount of willpower and just an ungodly amount of caffeine to reach this point, but we finally made it. I have all of my ingredients spread out here on the cutting board. I have my, my chocolate chips and my peanuts and my graham crackers and my pretzels and cinnamon and marshmallows and all that good stuff organized by cookie type. It's gonna be a really simple take where I'm just removing a little gap of ingredients here in the middle with my hand 
and then pulling my hand out of the frame. So when I reverse the take, it'll look like I'm actually placing the ingredients on top of the cutting board to start off this stop motion. And that's it for this stop motion. I can now start putting it all together. When I reverse it and tag on that final shot that we filmed first, I have a pretty cool looking stop motion. Here are all the stop motions again. It was a lot of work, but I'm really happy with the way they turned out. Kind of a last thought on this. One of the very first things that I learned about creating stop motions and something that I'm still practicing at and trying to get better at with every stop motion that I do is to give my object a sense of weight and momentum. Probably not the best example of this, but in this shot, the speed and the weight of the cookie push my hand down a little bit, and then it pops up out of my hand and then finally comes to rest in my palm. Now, when I went to plan out this shot, I just simply wrote that the cookie falls and I go catch it. I always forget about what happens after the fact, after it comes in contact with another object. And I think that is equally as important as the first part of the story. Now you have to think that the weight of every object and the speed at which it's moving is going to be different for every shot. Maybe it hits another surface and bounces back and does a roll. Maybe it stops dead flat or maybe it pushes all the other objects out of the way and scatters them around the frame. But if you're just starting out, adding in those little movements will go a long way into elevating your stop motions to another level. Be sure to go check out Bang Cookies. I've placed their link down in the description below. They're an amazing company and they were a huge help in the creation process of this video. So show them some love. You can get them shipped straight to your door with amazing flavors. Trust me, I've tried pretty much every flavor that they have. I've probably gained about 50 pounds since I started this video, but it was all worth it with flavors like cinnamon whiskey crackle and bourbon toffee walnut. You know, those flavors are right up my alley. Plus they have s'mores with marshmallows and graham crackers right on top. They have double chocolate, they have Rocky Road. They have simple one like chocolate and sea salt. Fantastic cookie, they are epic. You have to try them for yourself. Again, that link is down in the description below. If you make your own stop motions, post them on Instagram. I would love to check them out, so tag me in it, and I'll maybe even include them in next week's video. And speaking about next week's video, there is gonna be a next week's video. I know this year has been kind of sparse as far as my videos on YouTube, and there's a reason for that. I've had a lot of client work this year. I've also moved my studio from LA to Salt Lake, but I've still been shooting a lot of client work in LA and I've been up into Seattle and then back to Salt Lake and back to LA and back to Salt Lake and it just, it's been a crazy year, but it's kind of settled down now and I have a few videos in the work, at least five or six videos that I have in the works, but that's it for this video. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Woo, that's yummy. Thank you.